Needless to say, this is not your dad's Republican Party, I think, that we look at right now with the likes of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates and Louis Gohmert, uh, many others in Congress who are embracing Trump's big lie. None of them condemned by party leaders. In fact, the only person that I can tell that's faced any repercussions when it comes to the big lie uh, and the insurrection are not, you know, Mo Brooks, who helped incite the crowd, or Gomert or any of the others. It's you for refusing to lie about it. Um, what does that say? And if, you're, if the House Republican Party now stands for lying, is it worth saving? Uh, we have to save the party. I think the, the country needs a Republican Party, and certainly, you know, uh, the, the, the ideals and the principles that I believe in uh, should be reflected in that party. You know, I think that part of the challenge we're facing on both sides, I think it's been especially clear on my side recently, uh, is that, you know, we need to incentivize people who want to come to Washington and do real work, people who want to come and actually legislate. Uh, and we also need to get back to a time when we could have really vigorous policy debates where we were confident enough in, in our views and our side of things that we could stand up and argue for them and make the case. Um, but that we didn't have the kind of vitriol flying back and forth that, that we certainly have over the course of the last several years. Um, and, and people ought to want to be there and work hard and not be social media stars. Um, you know, not that, that's not the right reason to be there. The vast majority of members are there for the right reasons, mm -hmm. but, but we've got to find a way in our society to incentivize more substance, more seriousness. The issues we have to grapple with as a nation are really important, and, and they have, they're very consequential. And, and we need people who are up to that task and committed to doing the hard work of, of coming up with the right solutions for the country. But your view of the Republican Party is a minority view among House Republicans right now. I mean, I know you want to fight for it, but can you win this fight? I mean, it's going to be super tough. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's right, and we have to win it. And, um, you know, I think there are several things going on. I think that, as, as you pointed out before, people have been lied to. Uh, I think that it's really important for all of us to get to the bottom of what happened in 2020, what happened on January 6th, and to go forward looking towards truth. Um, I also think that you have more members who believe in substance and policy and ideals than are willing to say so. And in some cases, I mean, if you look at the vote to impeach, for example, uh, you know, there were members who told me that they were afraid for their own security, afraid, you know, in some instances for their lives. And that tells you something about where we are as a country. That's uh, if terrifying. members of Congress aren't able to, to cast votes or feel that they can't because of their own security. The House Republican Conference voted for Elise Stefanik to replace you in party leadership. Uh, you weren't there. You were talking to Wyoming reporters, I'm told. Would you have voted for her or would you have voted for Congressman Chip Roy of Texas, who, like you, is far more conservative than Elise Stefanik uh, and also, like you, refuses to push the big lie about the election? Yeah, I, uh, I would have voted for Chip. Uh, I think it's important for us to have people in leadership who are conservative. And I think it's also uh, really important for us to have people in leadership who are committed to the truth and committed to the Constitution. I want you to listen to what uh, Elise Stefanik said after she was elected to replace you as conference chair. Liz Cheney is a part of this conference. Adam Kinzinger is a part of this conference. Uh, they were elected and sent here by the people in their district. They are part of this Republican conference. We are unified in working with President Trump. It's like she had me and then she lost me. Unified in working with President Trump? That doesn't sound like anything Adam Kinzinger or you would say. Well, I think that, you know, I've been very clear uh, that what President Trump did uh, after the election, what he did to provoke the attack on January 6th, what he continues to do in terms of uh, the kind of language we know sparked that violence and the claims he's making to undermine our democracy uh, have, have you know, made him unfit for office. Uh, I don't believe that he should be the leader of the party. Uh, and I think it's really important for us as Republicans to stand for the truth, to stand for the Constitution. So you're not unified, I think it's fair to say. Well, I mean, listen, I, I think that there are some very big issues that we need to to grapple with as a party. And, and we need to be in a position where we can get back voters who left us in 2020, where we can convey to people how important it is uh, to, to come together around a set of principles that we know are the right ones for the country. I do think that the policies that President Biden and, and Speaker Pelosi are proposing uh, are misguided. I think they're harmful. I think they're wrong for the country. For Republicans to be in a position where we can stop those policies, 
We've got to be able to tell people you can trust us. You can trust us to be based around conservative principles uh, and to reject the lie and to protect the Constitution. So I've been listening to you since this began, this campaign of, of sorts that began. And one of the things that I hear that I think a lot of people in the media and maybe the public are even missing is, and, and you, you said this the other day, this isn't just about the past. This isn't just about the lie uh, before the insurrection and the lie since the insurrection. It sounds to me like you're saying Trump tried to steal the election once and he and his supporters, uh, his acolytes, they're going to try to do it again. Well, I think he is currently attempting to convince people that the election was stolen. He uses words like it was rigged every day. Now we see another release out from him. And it's really dangerous. You know, what it does is it, it undermines people's confidence in our system. And, and ultimately, we've got to have respect for the rule of law. We had 60 state and federal courts that heard his claims, rejected those claims. The Electoral College met. Uh, that's the end of it. Now, of course, in this instance, it wasn't. But we've seen what he's capable of. Uh, and he, he hasn't expressed any remorse or regret for January 6th. Uh, and I think it's very important for people to understand the, the ongoing danger of a former president attempting to undermine the system in the way he is. And as Republicans, we have a particular responsibility to stand up against that. But are you worried that he's going to try in 2024 and having now purged people like you, trying to purge people like Secretary of State Raffensperger in Georgia, et cetera, et cetera, this time he might succeed? He won't succeed. Uh, he may try, but he won't succeed. And, you know, I think what we've seen is... Uh, and, and Secretary of State Raffensperger is a really good example of just the tremendous strength of local Republican officials around the country refusing oh, yeah. to give in when the pressure, when President Trump was trying to pressure them. Uh, and I think what we've seen is how important it is the role individuals have to play in defending the system and how important that is. Our system held, the institutions held, there's an ongoing danger and we, we've got to continue to stand up against it. Our system held, but our system held, in my view, having covered this intensely, because we had 15 to 20 Republicans with integrity from Arizona to Georgia to Michigan to, to Philadelphia to Pennsylvania, Pat Toomey, standing there and saying that's not true. But if there's an effort to replace them, let me give you this hypothetical. What if Kevin McCarthy had been speaker in January? Do you have confidence that a speaker McCarthy would have upheld the rule of law, the Constitution, and voted to have those electors be counted? Or do you worry that a Speaker McCarthy would have bent to the will of Donald Trump and not, not upheld his constitutional duty? You know, I think what we have seen, and, and the Democrats objected also in, in, I believe, 2000, 2004. They, they also objected. It's not only Republicans who've objected. Fair, but now, not but, a real effort to underturn well, on the election. I do think it's important, though, to be clear we sh there should not be objections. You know, the law is clear. The Constitution is clear. Congress's role is really ministerial. The Electoral uh, Count Act is clear. If you have a slate of electors certified by a governor, uh, then th those votes must be counted. Uh, so I, I think that uh, nobody should be in a position, you know, and, and you can look at senators as well, nobody should have been in a position where they were playing a political game or where they were objecting uh, to those electors, and certainly uh, not because they were trying to please uh, the, you know, then, then President Trump. But do you have confidence that if McCarthy had been Speaker, he would have done the right thing? Uh, you know, I, I think that you have to judge people based on their actions, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, we're in a situation where nobody should have been objecting, and, and certainly, certainly, after uh, the attack, after we'd been evacuated and we were back in the chamber, uh, I think that the approach that Leader McConnell took uh, in terms of, you know, saying this is, we're not doing this, uh, that's, that's what we should have done on our side, and it's not what happened on our well, side. Well, judge people by their actions. I'm judging Kevin McCarthy by his actions, Leader McCarthy. He lied about the election immediately after the election went on Fox and said the election, that Donald Trump won in a landslide. He signed on to that deranged Texas lawsuit that the U.S. Supreme Court threw out the window. And after the insurrection, he voted to disenfranchise the voters of Arizona and Pennsylvania. Um, so I am judging him by his actions. And let me just say, as a voter and somebody who has a lot of loved ones in Pennsylvania, I worry what he would have done. Look, I, I think that that's a legitimate concern. Uh, I think I've been very clear. I disagree with the way that he's led the conference. I disagree with those actions that you've mentioned. I think that when, when we're in elected positions, when we're in leadership positions, we have an obligation to the Constitution. 
and we have an obligation to lead with principle. Do you think in all those actions that I just listed, he is complicit in the insurrection? I think that is uh, not something that I would say. I think that we're, we've got criminal investigations underway. Uh, sounds like we've got bipartisan agreement on a commission. Uh, and I think we will get to the bottom of, of understanding exactly what happened.